In previous videos on correlation or regression methods, I've mentioned that time series data cause problems with those types of tests. So time series is one where measurements are made over time. Every minute, you know, maybe every day, every year. Um, in the geosciences, we often have time series because we're looking at values in different geological time periods or measured through a sediment core, uh, you know, that also reflects time. You can run into similar problems with data that are collected spatially, but basically any situation where the value of one point is going to be somewhat related to the values of nearby points. If one is high, its neighbors are also likely going to be high. But if you're comparing time series data that have strong directional trends, there's a very good chance that you're going to find a relationship or a correlation, but that relationship will be spurious. So that means it looks like there's a strong relationship, but it's only there because both are increasing through time, or both are, both are decreasing through time. Or you could have a negative relationship if one increases and the other decreases. So in some cases, as in the example here, the relationship is clearly, and in this case humorously, spurious. Uh, but that's not always going to be the case. It's not always going to be obvious that the two things aren't related to each other. So we need to deal with this in some way when working with directional time series. But time series don't have to have long-term trends, and that brings up the idea of stationary versus non-stationary. So time series is called stationary, using it in the wide sense of the term, if its mean and some other parameters that are less important for us here um, is constant over the series. Now, this time series is stationary because even though you can see the values are fluctuating, they go up and down, they, they zigzag around, um, but there's no long-term trend in the average or mean value of this time series. In contrast, non-stationary time series have mean values that aren't constant. In the example here, the mean value increases over time. Um, of course, there are still these fluctuations, but the mean is increasing, which is sort of an especially problematic type of non-stationarity because it often leads to these spurious relationships or correlations. So what to do with time series data? Well, one very simple option is to do something called differencing the data. So instead of doing a correlation or a regression on the raw data values, we're going to use the change in value from one point in the time series to the next point. So this is called the first difference because it's the difference between adjacent points, only one point apart. Uh, it's possible to look at other differences. There's a second difference. Um, you know, between points that are two apart, a third difference, and so forth. Um, but really, first differences is what are almost always used because they're always they're almost always what you what is all needed to be used. So, for example, um, the first difference between this point here in the green time series and this point here, the one just before it, is just the value of one minus the value of the other. So it's the change from one point to the next. So basically the first difference is just, instead of looking at raw data, we're looking at change. So we look at all pairs of points um, along here to get our time, our, our time series of first differences instead. So the, the basis or the rationale for this process is that if there is a relationship, a truly a true relationship, that's not just caused by the fact that they both increase over time, an increase in one variable should occur at the same time as an increase in the other. When one increases by a lot, the other should as well. If one decreases by a small amount, the other should decrease by a small amount. So taking the first difference tends to make each time series stationary. doesn't necessarily do that. There still could be other patterns as well, such as seasonal or other trends. But first differences or difference in the data typically make most time series stationary. So here's an example of, of how you might use it. So looking on the left, when these two time series are plotted next to each other, with their values both increasing through time, it really looks like there's a strong relationship. You look and then, oh yeah, I mean, those are definitely related. As one goes up, so does the other. But let's take this pair of points here. The green series increases by quite a large amount, but the purple series actually decreases by a lot. So that, that pair of points, if we do the first differences, corresponds to this. A uh, fairly large change in green and a, and a negative change in purple on the x-axis there. In this pair, at the very beginning, the purple time series goes up by a lot and the green one goes down by a little. And so that corresponds to this point over here. 
a large positive increase on the x-axis for purple and a small negative increase on the y-axis for the green series. So if you look overall at these points, after doing the first differences, which is what's plotted on the right, there doesn't actually appear to be much of a relationship after all. So what should you do with time series beyond just doing differences? So the first step is to consider your scientific goal. So if you think there is a scientific reason why one variable should cause changes in the other, but not the reverse, or if your goal is to predict one variable from the other, but not the reverse again, then regression is probably appropriate. If, there's, if you think there's just an association between the variables, perhaps they're both related to some external factor, then some kind of correlation is appropriate. Next, let's consider the nature of the time series. So for correlation tests, regardless of whether the time series is stationary or non-stationary, we want to perform the correlation on the first differences rather than on the raw data. So you can do simple correlation, you can do a partial correlation, you can do semi-partial correlation with the difference data. You know, all these methods are available to you. But you should plot the first differences as a scatter plot, one variable versus the other, um, to choose between parametric and non-parametric correlation. So not the raw data, but if the relationship between the first differences is curved, or if the first differences themselves are not normally distributed, then you can run a non-parametric correlation. So if you're doing regression and the time series is non-stationary, you can do just a regular ordinary least squares regression, but on the first differences again instead of the raw values. Make sure that the other assumptions are still met. Check that differencing has removed any autocorrelation of the residuals. It most likely has, but not necessarily. Make sure that the relationship of the first difference is a linear relationship if you're doing a linear regression, and, and so forth. Finally, if you're doing regression and the time series is stationary, you can use a technique called generalized least squares regression, which I have a separate video on, so I won't go into here. But it's also totally fine to do, in this case, ordinary least squares regression on the first differences, just like you would otherwise. So you can, you know, to wrap up here, beware of time series, especially non-stationary time series, because they can cause problems. If both of your variables are both strongly increasing or decreasing or both have some kind of strong trend, well, there's a very good chance that you're looking at a correlation or, or, or a relationship in regression that is inflated, perhaps even spurious or false. There are a lot more sophisticated methods for this, especially once you get into the, the economics um, literature, but working with first differences is a simple but powerful approach for working with time series, so always do the differences of your time series.